and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome to some reaction following Barca's defeat to Hitafe on the weekend. Already over on more Talk FCB, we have been talking about exactly how that defeat came about and certainly right here, we're going to be looking more into it because like I said earlier on, it's early days, we are early in the season, there's plenty of time here to hit back, to learn from your mistakes, but to do that, you've got to analyse, you've got to sit down and ultimately hold your hands up and say, you know what, we got that wrong. Today, we're discussing the shape of Barcelona, the structure of yesterday's team, with particular emphasis on Antoine Griezmann and Lionel Messi. It's all coming up, so let's get to it. Because if we start here by taking a look at the shape of Barcelona in yesterday's game, because like I say, Koeman did make a number of changes to his starting lineup, and that was fine. You know, rotation is going to be needed right throughout the season. I don't have any complaints at all about that. But in the first two games against Villarreal and against Celta, and to a degree against Sevilla, we were very, very nicely structured. There was a good balance across the team. We had Griezmann there out on the right-hand side, which on an individual level may not have been working so well for Griezmann. But as a team, we were functioning pretty well in those attacking areas and the same there in midfield. And I just want to compare there that kind of shape, that balance that we had away at Celta to what we saw yesterday away at Hitafe. And as you can see, it's night and day. There is such a gulf there in what we saw away at Celta and then Hitafe. It looks like two completely different teams and that's because of that right-hand side. It all fell apart out there and when you take away one side of that team, the whole thing falls down. To have a fully functioning, well-structured team, every part of it, every aspect of that team has to be working. Because as you look at that there, you've got Dest, you've got Roberto, that's fine. I don't think Ousmane Dembele got high enough, didn't get wide enough throughout the game. He kept coming inside, he kept there dropping in to receive the ball. He was clearly looking for the ball. He wanted to get a bit of confidence going, but it didn't really happen for him. And then you've got Messi and you've got Griezmann. Those are two players that, as we're going to discuss, want to play in the same sort of area. Griezmann effectively got his wish. He got to play more central. But was it to the detriment of the entire team? Because, as it was indeed widely publicised before the game, Antoine Griezmann, whilst away on international duty, spoke about how his national team coach at France, Didier Deschamps, how he plays him in the right position and he knows how to use him. And then Koeman said in his press conference before the game, he said, you know what, if I play Griezmann on the right, it's for the good of the team. It's for the good of this group. That's my aim. I'm not really worried about individuals. I want to make sure that this team works and functions. But yet, yeah, after saying that, after defending his decision, there to play Griezmann out wide in the very next game after Griezmann has spoken out Ronald Koeman plays him more centrally and there's two problems two big big problems with why that didn't work the timing of it and the decision itself because for me in terms of the timing playing Griezmann there in a more central role immediately after he's publicly expressed his frustration which I think we all accept he shouldn't have done there was no need to speak out like that and sort of bring pressure to him to the coach while away on international duty that wasn't going to help anybody and then now to see Koeman immediately almost bow to his demands I think that's worrying I think that there would set a very dangerous precedent when you're trying to control their addressing room of players that let's not forget everybody wants to play in their favoured role not everybody gets to do it but everybody wants to and you can't just bow to each and every one of the demands like Koeman said you've got to do what's best for the team but it's not just that either because the other problem with Griezmann speaking out while away on international duty was the pressure that he not only put on Ronald Koeman but he also put on himself because you knew as soon as Griezmann was placed there in that central area he had to perform he had to back up his words and he didn't that was the big big problem yesterday because it means that when the time finally comes when you get to play in that favor role if you're going to talk constantly about how you want to play there how your national team coach does it better than your club team coach when that time comes the pressure is on you've got to perform and that's why when Griezmann was racing through on goal he's put in beautifully by Pedri there's a massive massive chance for him to open the scoring to really put a marker down and say yeah I can play this role I can score the goals for Barcelona, it was a moment that would make or break him. And of course, he didn't score. He missed and it wasn't even close. And from that moment on, it was exactly the same as it always was. Central or not, Griezmann was largely ineffective. I think the one way to describe it was to say, again, he drifted through the game. And if we're being honest, he was very, very fortunate to actually stay out there for 80 minutes of the game. I think we were all expecting him to come off way, way before that. But the thing is, 
That's not even the biggest problem. The timing of Koeman's decision there to play Griezmann more central, that wasn't the biggest issue. Because the biggest problem for me is that favoured role. This thing that we always talk about with Griezmann, about playing in a central position, playing in his natural role, the one that he played at Atletico. How many more times are we going to say this? But it doesn't exist at Barcelona. The board should have known that when they signed Griezmann. Many of us at the time said he's a player coming in much in the same way as Coutinho, whereby the role doesn't really exist. Are you going to go and spend there over a hundred million euros on a player who won't necessarily fit in our team? They did. And guess what? It's still is not working. Because then you come on to the subject and the topic of the performance of Lionel Messi, which I have to say yesterday wasn't great either. You've got to hold your hands up. There was many players out there for Barcelona who didn't play at their best. Messi was indeed one of them. I would say actually for Messi, it was a performance there where he was hardly involved. And this is the problem. I don't think Messi and Griezmann, when they're both playing in that central area, it doesn't really work. We saw it when Suarez was out there for months with injury, when Griezmann and Messi had the opportunity to play together, to play in the team down the middle, and they just didn't really connect. Both of them want to play in the same sort of area. They both want to drop deep. They both want to be on the ball. And it just doesn't work that way. Only one player can play that role. And that's why it's so, so difficult. And you look at it yesterday. I think Messi, as the game went on, actually became quite disinterested. I think when you're playing him alongside Griezmann in that particular central position, he doesn't really want to know. You look at it yesterday in terms of his touches per game. Against Villarreal, he was heavily involved in everything we were doing. 84 touches, exactly the same there against Celta and against Severe, but again to Tafe, 60 touches. It's almost like there, he got subbed off early, but he didn't. Played the full 90 and only 60 touches managed, which is a really, really low amount for Messi, who's usually the beating heart of everything. And that's the problem right now. You've got Messi, who's not as involved as he usually is. You've got Griezmann, whose natural position at Barcelona doesn't really exist. You're lacking a nine. And I think when it comes down to it, Koeman has to stick to his principles. He started the season really, really well. If Griezmann has to play on the right for the benefit of the team, then he should do so. If Griezmann has to sit on the bench for the benefit of the team, he should do so. And it's going to be so, so interesting now to see what happens in the Champions League in midweek. And then, of course, in El Clasico. Is Griezmann going to play in those games? Where is he going to play in those games? Or is Koeman now going to look at Griezmann and say, look, I gave you a chance. I played you centrally. Did you deliver for me? No, you didn't. There are massive games to come. Big decisions for Koeman to make. Now he'll be realising what being coach of Barcelona is all about. So please do leave your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. Do you feel as though Griezmann will remain in the team and should he remain in the team for Tuesday's game against Ferran Faras at the camp now as the Champions League does return on Monday? Of course, we're going to have all the build-up for that game coming up. Like I say, these games come in really, really quickly now. Thank you indeed, though, for your support. It wasn't the result we wanted yesterday. It wasn't the way that we wanted to return. But like I say, with these games coming up, we have the opportunity to hit back and hit back quickly. I will see you soon, guys. Thanks as always for watching. But until next time, as always, Vizca El Barca. Oh.